Hi, my name is Paul from Physics High, and today I'm going to be reviewing Module 8 from the Universe to the Atom, and in particular, I'm going to be addressing the second inquiry question, the structure of the atom. Now, a quick reminder, anything that I produce here will actually be available in a printable version, so you can access that via the link in the description below. Now, Module 8 is called From the Universe to the Atom. The module is divided up into five key inquiry questions, and those inquiry questions really ask some important questions about our understanding of the elements. And in particular, as we look at the inquiry questions, we see or our understanding of science develops as we build models based on evidence. So the first inquiry question asks the question, what evidence is there for the origin of the elements? The second inquiry question asks, how is it known that the atom is made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons? In essence, we're dealing with the atomic structure. The third inquiry question asks, how is it known that classical physics cannot explain the structure of the atom? So we're really addressing the quantum mechanical model. The fourth inquiry question digs deeper and asks, how can the energy of the nucleus be harnessed? So I'm just gonna simplify it by just writing the nucleus. And going deeper still, the last inquiry question says, how is it known that our human understanding of matter is incomplete? And throughout these questions, starting from the origins to the further exploration, going deeper and deeper to our understanding of matter, what we also cover as we do these inquiry questions, we examine how over a period of about 150 years, that evidence resulted in the development of models and those models were challenged and revised and thrown out as more evidence came in. And so that process is an important process to also appreciate in this particular module. In the second inquiry question, we're particularly interested in the development of our understanding of the atom away from an indivisible ball, as it's often represented, which existed prior to the beginning of the 20th century, to our understanding where the atom is made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. And we start off first with the concept of J. And we start off first with the work of J.J. Thompson. And J.J. Thompson, by applying our understanding of electric fields and magnetic fields, which you addressed in module six, was able to show the existence of a particle which was significantly smaller than hydrogen, and we now know this as the electron. So you need to be familiar that J.J. Thomson developed a new understanding of the atom based on experimental evidence where he fired cathode rays through a intersecting electric field and magnetic field, and as a result, changed the model of the atom. Following on from J.J. Thomson, we go further with the work of Robert Millikan. Now Millikan too also used the idea of fields to understand, in this case, the properties of electrons, in, in particular, the idea of the value of the charge on the electron. And so in this case, he was looking at the interaction between electric fields and gravitational fields. So understand that these experimental techniques that J.J. Thompson did and Millikan did led us to a deeper understanding of the structure of the atom, namely the discovery of the electron. We then move on to the work of Rutherford. In the case of Rutherford, by firing alpha particles at gold foil, developed a new model of the atom away from J.J. Thomson's plum pudding model to a model which we refer to often as the planetary model. That is, the experiment changed our understanding of the atom away from sort of some diffuse ball to the idea that an atom has a nucleus and that the electrons exist in orbit around it. And that led to our planetary model. Rutherford subsequently also understood that the nucleus is made up of particles themselves, which led to the understanding of the fact that the nucleus is made up of protons. And then in 1932, we have Chadwick. Now James Chadwick, by using our understanding of the conservation laws, that is the law of conservation of momentum and the law of conservation of energy, established that the nucleus is not just made up of protons, but also contains uncharged particles, which we now refer to as the neutron. And so the works of these scientists developed a model that was away from the 
diffuse ball that we would call the atom to now something that is made up of three distinct entities, our protons, our neutrons, and our electrons in orbit. Well, I hope that it helps you understand this particular inquiry question and as it fits in the other inquiry questions within this particular module. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. Put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you. And please consider supporting me by buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.